cooker, a freeze, a, a, a refrigerator, you have a bed, mattress, you only put furnished. Yeah, house. fully furnished apartments. Yeah. But when I went back to my wife to tell her that now we can move in, she told me that is very good. I think you do a good job. But unfortunately you'll go alone. To those furnished Yes, apartments. with us we need to buy a plot and then you can be visiting us in case you want to go. That's how I That is how I ended up buying a plot and building in Kitale when I was still young. If you are going to get married at 49 and you are retiring <laughs> at 55 or 60, these are the kind of people that you will see asking for contracts and extension of service in government. <laughs> because you did not plan. And now the kids are in P1, P2, grade 3, grade 4. Madam, when you do not invest in your friendship with your wife, let me talk to the men more important, the men. Because women can, uh, yeah, they are the women. But for me, I believe that it is the man who decides on the direction of a relationship. It is important that you know, one day you will be living with this person alone. So there will be very many flies around. And especially when you have good money, of course. But it is important that you know who is going to take care of you when you... And a happy new year. My name is Lucy Moria, the founder of Lucy Moria Network. If you have not prescribed yet, please do subscribe so that you do not miss any of our very educative, informative and inspiring stories and lessons. Uh, today we have an expert in pre-retirement and planning the life after retirement. A man who has retired more than three times and his name is Caleb Sunguti. He is a former lecturer at KSG. He's a former manager at Kenya Telecom, currently consultant in leadership and management and governance. Welcome, Sunguti. Thank you very much. Good to have you. Yes, I'm happy to be here. Happy uh, New Year. Happy New Year to you. How was your New Year? Very good. Christmas? I was in the, I was in the village. And yes. Uh, I enjoyed the freedom, the Kakamega forest environment. And I'm back in Nairobi. Great. Welcome to the city. Thank you very much. Now today we have you today as an expert of yes. Uh, yes. planning how to retire. Yes. And uh, I've you say it's three times, so I'm an expert. life after retirement. Yes, I yes. So we are very much listening to hear from you. Yeah. So Mr. Caleb Sunguti from Kakamega, you just said. Eh? Yes. So tell us about yourself, a little about about you, Caleb. Is. Yes, Caleb, uh, I, I was born and uh, brought up in Kakamega, uh, from Malaba to be exact. Um, uh, I went through a local primary, local uh, secondary day school. Uh, I thank God that uh, I was, uh, at the time, the best student of the school. So Shambelele Secondary School produced the first graduate through me, because I got a Division 1 of 18 points at the time. Wow and proceeded to Bungoma High School where I did my A-levels in Mathematics, Geography and Economics. So I qualified to join uh, Kenyatta University where I studied Bachelor of Education in Mathematics and Business. Mathematics. So a major in Business and a minor in Mathematics and also uh, I did uh, a lot in ICT. So we were among the first graduates of Computer Studies at the University. And at that time, uh, computer studies was only for mathematicians. So we were just about 24 of us who studied uh, computing. And we have now gone ahead to teach very many others uh, in the country. Uh, thereafter, I worked uh, at Kitale National Polytechnic as a lecturer, as a head of department in business. I left uh, TSC after working for three years. So I actually retired the first time. After working for three, for three years. years, when you were still uh, old, so were that you? That is when I was, uh, uh, I should have been now 27 years. You retired? I retired. Um, I retired and started my own business, a computer business and a computer training center. It expanded and became a college for business also. 
So I did that until 1998 when business was so bad. Uh, so I left uh, the business and uh, came back to Nairobi from Kitale. You retired again? Yes, so I came to Nairobi, started teaching at the Kenya College of Accountancy, KCA. Uh, from there, I went back to the university now to do my master's. And that is now how I joined KCCT, first as a part-time lecturer and then as a, a full-time lecturer later on. From my business and then uh, came and became a lecturer at the Kenya College of Accountancy yeah. before it became a university. KCA? KCA, we were okay. teaching just around Club Cinema on uh, Diamond Plaza. So uh, after that I went back to University of Nairobi now to do my MBA and then at the same time I joined the Kenya College of Accountancy which was uh, converted to multimedia university. Then I moved to now do practically what I teach. So I joined the Telecom Kenya first as an assistant manager. Then I became a manager in procurement where I worked until 2008. The company was, re we, we were retrenched. And re retrenchment is one of the things that lead into retirement. Because if government or organizations decide to reorganize themselves through uh, staff rationalization or restructuring or retrenchment as we call it, then uh, so it is a continuous thing yes. it happens in every fact, day yeah, in fact i can say uh, uh, it should be retirement should be something that you are hopeful for that it will come anytime but i'll come back to that so i from there i joined the uh, 2008 we were retrained uh, many of us are in the field of colleagues i can see some even felix koske was with me is now the head of public service in the government we have had uh, Charles Keter, he was my colleague. Davis Chirichir was my colleague. Oh. Yeah, so we have had many people that uh, left Telcom and they uh, are doing some work somewhere. So that was some form of retirement? Yes, we left. Uh, I, when I was out shortly, I met a friend of mine who was then a lecturer at the Kenya School of Government. Then it was called Kenya School of Administration. Then he asked me, yeah, you are very good in, uh, in accounts. Can you come and teach something in... Uh, in the school of government i said uh, i was retired i didn't want any job i wanted to eat my money uh, stay at home but i thought he had sense so i went there for a, for a short time then uh, i was absorbed uh, by professor margaret cobia now i became a full-time lecturer at the kenya school of government oh, okay. so i worked there until 2018 when i left uh, i tried a bit of politics in 2017 then now i i left uh, government and then I ran my own farm. Uh, it's called Institute of Leadership and Research in Africa. So currently you are running your own? Uh, my own farm. As a consultant? Fact, two weeks ago, uh, we, I was inducting Nairobi City CC members. The, C, the chief executive, I mean the county executive committee members, have done narrow county, have trained a lot in other counties. So I do chief officers, uh, directors, uh, board members of various boards. Uh, I induct uh, university councils, uh, uh, those, those, that's what I do, and then I do consultancy and research. Oh, wonderful. Now, after all that, what I noted most is the retirement part. Yes. You have retired several times. Yes. And until you have become an expert, yes. and now today you wanted to share with other Kenyans, because yes. you're already living yes. it. What, what, uh, so what can you yeah, tell us? Tell the viewers. By definition, yeah. from the Webster University uh, Dictionary, you'll find retirement is when you stop working or when you change jobs for some reason. Character so retirement does not necessarily mean that you are old, tired and useless. No. In fact, uh, I will tell you, uh, Madam Lucy, that many countries before the 19th and 20th century, there was no retirement. People were working until they die in the job. It is German that was the first country to start retirement programs because they thought now people uh, are getting wealthy. They can now, uh, if you have some wealth, you can stay or you can leave your job and still live a quality life. So they started retirement so that people can go out there and use the in investments they have put to live a good life. Otherwise, we, we were not having retirement. Retirement was like the real life. You 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 I mean you work until you sorry you work until you die at the workplace. 
Oh. So it's that is how far we have come. So these are just this is just as a result of policy. And in fact, uh, yeah. they uh, they they say uh, many things uh, dynamics play come into play, but if a country is becoming richer, they allow like in US they allow early retirement so that when they utumie pesa yako. Lakini kama bado watu wanahitaji kazi that is when we increase you remember we increase from 55 to 60 and the professors and judges to about 75 and so on in Kenya in Kenya so the reason is that we want to try and keep these brains so that they can give us more knowledge and wisdom so out of your experiences and the expertise yeah. how what would you tell the the, the viewers yeah. on how to pre plan for retirement first let me say that uh, <clears throat> when you retire there are things you lose so you must know first that you are lose, going to lose something you are going to lose your title the title you are known by and this i teach even to members of parliament and members of the county assemblies politicians because when you lose your seat you lose your mweshimiwa, effective mweshimiwa. if you are a director in the ministry or in a state corporation yes ps you lose that title and what goes with it? You lose a house. Maybe you are occupying a government or employer's house. Maybe you had a car, a big car, where you put your hand outside like this. Eh? Now you have not bought any. Now you have retired to Chwele. You have retired to Kwale. You have now retired to Marsabit. You can imagine you do not have transport to take you to any place. So that's why uh, you will find you have, you have lost friends. The people who used to call you, and I think I remember Dr. Ndemo, former PS, yeah, talked, talked about, about it, it yeah. that you get fewer calls. People don't call you. People don't even visit you. And when they see your phone, they think you want to borrow. So that is the challenge. You lose social groups where you, are, you used to meet. You, you, you miss uh, government uh, medical cover. Remember you, when you are uh, employed, there is a medical insurance for the employees so like government is 10 million and you have lost a seat and that is why many people by the research show that those who have not prepared well to retire they die after one and a half years and you see many politicians dying just about after two years of losing an election really yes because you cannot manage your own condition you're not used to yes and then mm, retiring also means you come in in contact with things that you did not know for example your family you need to build your family afresh you need to reconnect with your spouse if you are a lady your husband if you are a husband your wife you left your wife somewhere in Mumias you live in Nairobi you only visit and come Christmas now you time. want eh, now you want to go and live there and it is worse for lawyers if you now start questioning things like Kuna kuku ilikuwa ina, ina, ina piga kelele hapa. Mayai yenye ilizai iko wapi. So here we are talking about what do you lose. We are going to lose that allowance, the allowances, the benefits that you are getting. Instead you are going to get either graduity or you are going to get, uh, if you are in a pension scheme, you are going to get some either lump sum or some monthly payments if you are in a pension program. So these are the challenges that will come. Now, you asked me a very good question. What should we do to plan, uh, to plan a retirement? First, I want to, uh, to look at it from government perspective. That the government should start looking at a human being from the time you are looking for a job to the time you are not looking for a job. What is your livelihood? What is your living conditions? Because we talk about job seekers, so many unemployed youth looking for jobs and we try to create employment opportunities so that they can get jobs but we do not know where do they go after they exit the system now you have been you have been working in the ministry of uh, interior as a dc you have now retired you are no longer a dc to your aunties and your your playmates not your a peer. Count commissioner yeah now a commissioner now you are back in the village you are a judge you have now retired you are now in the village nobody really cares about whether you are a judge or not people are looking at you as just an anybody in the village so you have to plan how you are going to integrate yourself with the society because we call this government or employer 
a giving system. And where you go is called a receiving system. A receiving system is your community, your friends, your relatives, your wife, your children, your, your relatives, your neighbors. In fact, that is one of the challenges you will find. If you don't plan well, you will not have a wife. If you are a man, that is when life will be very difficult. You have nobody to even give you water, nobody even to give you your medicine. Nobody is there even to cook for you. And that is why we will talk about some mitigation. It for example, like the people in the military, I know, yes. they have a lot of time when they are not with their families. Yes. And uh, most of the times, life is so easy for them. Yes. They have cars, yes. they have vehicles, they are people yeah, brushing, even brushing even their shoes, yes, yes. and uh, even cooking for them. Yes. Now your wife is like, it's, or your family is out of the picture. Yes. Now you lose your job, you are yeah. retired, or you yes. get sick, you have to go now and live with so them. So you have to start planning. First planning, you have to set your goals. You have to set your, your over, uh, overarching goals. Then the bigger goal, what you want to be known for. Like that one is what I planned before. When should I marry? I married right the time I left university. I had already gotten a girlfriend who became my wife. So we started life immediately. So my planning for retirement begins with my marriage. Because if you are going to get married at 49 and you are mm -hmm. retiring at 55 or 60, these are the kind of people that you will see asking for contracts and extension of service in government. <laughs> because you did not plan. And now the kids are in P1, P2, grade 3, grade 4. When you marry, you are, yes. in, you are 40. Yes, me, I thank God because by now my last born is 23 years. But they have yeah. their own life. They have their own life. They are young adults. So that is what I'm trying to tell friends. Who so even when you get married, it's part of it's planning. It's part of planning. Because you want to get your children so that you'll remain with mama or mama will remain with you. At least now you can enjoy your, your life as, as it were. That's number one. That is, if you're interested in the marriage yes, you like. if you want to marry. If you want you children, want to marry because to you may. I recommend may, yeah. marry early. If so you that, are interested. Yes, in fact, if you are interested, marry when you have nothing so that you build. Live everywhere. We started off without even a mattress. We even borrowed things to begin life in Kitale. But we have now more beds and all these things are there. So begin when you have to begin. The Oswailis wana sema alias anaya safiri ni yule yako bandarin. If you are on the stage, any vehicle that comes will pick you. But you cannot be saying I'm traveling and you are not. Now talking. I will stage. <laughs> okay. The second thing about uh, planning for retirement is planning your finances. However little, plan how to save. Start saving early. Young people need to start saving from their first salary. From their first salary. Start planning how to save. Know that that money is not with you. Just know that if my earnings is 50,000 and I'm saving 5,000, start when you know your, your, your salary net is 45. That 5,000 is going for your retirement. So start saving early. Number three, you need to know where you will stay when you retire. Where will you stay when you retire? Will you stay in the city? Will you stay in your ancestral land? For those of us who still have ancestral land. Are you going to stay in Kitale or are you going to stay in at river? Or Mombasa. Or Mombasa. Or you are going to stay in Nyeri. Start thinking about that so that you align your plans to your finances. So that you start thinking of a property that you can invest in so that that money, I mean, by the time you are retiring. You, number, uh, what I left out about the family. You need to project how many kids, what is the possible size of your family. Do you want to have 20, 20 children? Do you want to have three? Do you want to have five? Negotiate this deal with your, those, of all, those of you who want to have children so that you have a size of a family that you can manage because, and when you should have them so that you do not be told come late in the day and when you do not have the strength to, 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 to bring them up and then you cause also confusion. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that... Uh, we need to prioritize his life because if you do not have life you don't have even to plan so you have to look at your healthy status 
uh, you need to start early to know um, th this question are posted to many officers and they, 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 they find it's really uh, strange or ironical. I say you should ask yourself when would you like to die? When would you like to die? And more importantly discuss death with your spouse. It is an uh, lawyer like a culture, African culture we don't talk about death but it's sometimes good to know if you died or you are not able to do anything what would happen to your family? So this is, these are things that you need to have in mind so that you can do your things fast, you can put your things in order, you can have your children in school, you can educate them, because life is what they say. Not to stay health is thinking wealth. like yeah. you never die. Yes. Like you have, you have life forever. Forever. Yeah. In fact, that if you are scared with what <laughs> I've just said, then you are the right person to start planning to retire. If you get scared of death, then you can plan quickly because if you do not if death doesn't scare you then you think you live up to 120 <laughs> like the people in the bible then you don't have to plan retirement because you'll have died by you'll die when you are around 130. so we better know that there is a time limit to life we have an expiry date there is end to what we what where we can reach with life so do what you need to do now, now. yes save invest where you can take care of your family invest in your relationship because madam when you do not invest in your friendship with your wife let me i'll talk to the men more important the men because women can uh, yeah they are the women but for me i believe that it is the man who decides on the direction of a relationship it is important that you know one day you will be living with this person alone so there will be very many flies around, and especially when you have good money, of course. But it is important that you know who is going to take care of you when you retire. So planning is very important. And uh, planning is, uh, should take time. You should think about it. You should uh, even uh, seek advice from your uh, financial advisor so that you know where will you also... And the other thing is health. You must invest in a medical cover. Plan to invest in a medical insurance, including NHIF and other medical covers. Because as I've said, life is everything, or they say health is wealth. If we do not take care of ourselves, we are going to, if one of us goes and we do not have anything, then the retirement of that other party uh, is really in, in, in shambles. So we expect, I expect that uh, I would tell any of my audience that let us plan for our health, even now. Those of you who are 50, 60, 70, and I tell my colleagues, if you have an auntie, a mom, a dad, a grandfather who needs medical cover, one of the best uh, gifts you can give them, take for them an NHIF insurance cover instead of waiting. Then there is the one other thing I need to talk about planning. Value system, your value system, what do you believe in? What do you believe in? Do you believe in anything? If you believe, like me, I grew up knowing that I want to have a family, then I want to have a home in future. My vision. When I'm old, I should see my grandchildren driving into the home. Several vehicles. Eh? If you come to my home, I would imagine I would see about 10 cars. And those are not for visitors. Those are for my children and grandchildren. That was your vision. My vision. So that means I have to have a house for them. That means I have to educate them. To that, yes. That means I have to plan my own health so that I can witness uh, I, and play with my grandchildren. So I thought when I was under TSC uh, at the time at Kitale Technical that if I stay in, uh, I had been given a house by the way. I'd been given a house, I was living in section 6, those who know the estates there. Then they appointed me as the head of department and they were giving me free house with everything. You walk in with your briefcase of clothes and you have a cooker, a freeze, a, a refrigerator, you have a bed, mattress, you only put furnished a, fully furnished apartments. Yeah. But when I went back to my wife to tell her that now we can move in, she told me, that is very good. I think you do a, a good job. But unfortunately, you'll go alone. To those furnished Yes, apartments. with us, we need to buy a plot. And then 
you can be visiting us in case you want to go. That's how I That is how I ended up buying a plot and building in Kitale when I was still young. Wow. So these are the kind of things I'm, I'm talking about that you need to know one day you leave this job. Don't, don't take a job until you own the desk, you own the computers, you own the parking space, you own your house, nobody can pass near your office. You say, nobody, I would rather die here. I would rather die. Yes, and that is why you are cutting other people's feet, not knowing that whether it is state house, we just uh, change, uh, changed the presidents just yeah. the other day. Yeah. Uh, we have had ministers, very powerful. Simeon Nyachai, we used to have Modaura, people yeah. in public service. Yeah. So many senior people, even in politics. We have had Dalma Sotieno, we have had Omamo, we have had Nabuera. Very senior people, and these people have now retired. We meet with Mzee Nabuera at home, Hanakunyo Chaiyake, he's very happy. So I would like a situation in your planning where you want to enjoy your retirement, you are happy with your family, you are in good health, you participate in community affairs, you go to church, you support a charity, yeah. you support some children who don't have fees, you can pay for them, you can grieve with those who are mourning, you can sit with the Wale Wako Matanga, you sit with them and you, you socialize. Also socialize with them yeah. and you can assist your pickup to carry a sick person to go to hospital and you can walk freely without security. Madam Lucy, I really feel bad and when I see politicians walking with security all over the place. I think we should know that when you get to the village, when you retire, and I have to tell my, see, my friends who are in uh, senior positions, you don't need those, uh, those uh, very uh, these, um, people. Be, you, be you, yourself. Yeah, be yourself. Sit with the people. Take uh, a matatu. I, 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 there are people now, we can see even... Uh, very senior people going to Kenyatta Hospital. Just now we have had our very senior, and may her soul rest in peace, Catherine Kasavuli. Imagine. Just in Kenyatta Hospital, a very good hospital. I was there also in 2020 when I had COVID. And it is a wonderful uh, medical facility, and I am here. I, I came so, through it. So, Mr. Sunguti. Yes. Thank you for all that information. And from your talks, yes. when you talk about this kind of people you are describing, the retired, yeah. they are the people who have been working for the government. Yes. Maybe probably because you work for the government. Yes, yes. And uh, the people who have worked for the government or for some organizations, yeah. they are about 20% in our population. Yes. There is now the 80% yes. who are everyday hustlers, who are yeah. do, oh, they are doing small businesses, yeah. their own things. Mm. So, how mm. would they also do their retirement? Do, does a Boda Boda guy need to plan how to retire? Mm. Does a Matato guy need to plan to retire? Does someone who is just doing mouth to, to hand to mouth, hand to mouth job need yeah. to plan yeah. also for retirement? Thank you. Necessary? Thank you very much for refocusing me on that. Yeah. I can say that everybody needs to retire and to know that there's a time to rest. Actually, retiring is now to now resting, stopping what you used to do on a routine basis to now resting. Like if you had a shop in the market, now you no longer go. Our friends of mine, very elderly mamas and uh, elder wazes, who have now stopped going to the, to the hardware, they have stopped going to, and I tell people even work in, uh, who work in the factory like West Kenya Sugar Company, the people who, are, who, who do border border. The you, man you live yes, you cannot, I met a border who gave me a lift in Mombasa, and it's around 70 years. And it was at night, and I was wondering, how can such an elder continue to work midnight? He's dropping people. So anyway, the answer to your question is that we need to know all of us will retire. House girls, house helps retire. Yeah, yes. Those who work in people's uh, homes to help with the work there. Uh, even those who have gone to the, even those of you in the in the Gulf region, those in the U.S., those in those in India, those who have left Kenya and South Africa, you you know that you'll retire, and you'll retire, and some will come back to Kenya. Please know that you need to save money. You need to do the planning, as I've said. You need to check your family relationship. And let me tell you about family relationship. When people don't have very good relationship, they die very fast. So, so you need to plan 
every one of us, whether you are a nurse or you are a, a border, you are a house help, you are a border, you work in a factory, you are a casual in industrial area, please know that one of these days you are going to move from Kawangware to go and live in Kericho. As we conclude, Mr. Sunguti, and uh, on retirement and planning and your life after retirement, it's mm. wonderful. And uh, I am sure you've been talking to the viewers, the ordinary Kenyans. Uh, once, uh, before you mentioned about Germany having come up with uh, policies to do something, mm. do you think our government, both the county and national government, they have a role to play in guiding the Kenyans, the citizens, on this kind of retirement, planning and life after retirement. Like we said, it's not everyone who is employed by the government, but almost everyone is contributing to this nation, is contributing as a taxpayer. Do you think the government has a role? In fact, uh, what other governments, I should begin there, when they are campaigning, there is always a slot in their manifesto about pensioners, people who have retired or will retire to go home. In other the, countries? In other countries. We have a very weak policy on uh, pensioners in Kenya. And very few political parties are talking about how to assist pensioners. I need to call upon the president and his team that we need to have a proper and a serious plan on retirement. Not the piecemeal of social cash transfers, the 8,000, the 2,000, is not enough. We need to have a full plan on it. But let me mention when you are still at work, the companies or institutions and the families need to talk about retirement. We need to talk about the day you will stop doing this show and you are just seated in the house. We need to talk about it. We need to have policies in human resource in the manual that discusses about retirement. And we need to have specific activities. For example, giving people time for leave to go and stay with their family. We need to give even the paternity leave which was brought in recently. You know, initially, Madam Lucy, you needed to, for you to get a leave allowance, you needed to get a letter from your chief to bring back to government to tell them that you actually was at home so that you can access your allowance. leave allowance. Now that was removed by this government. We are moving in government, but very slowly. The other thing that I can mention about uh, what we can do is that we need, uh, like the Bunge, the former members of parliament have an association of these of retired members of parliament. We have also a group of uh, retired uh, councillors and now MCAs uh, association. As in Telcom Kenya, with those who left, we have an association of those who retired from from the from uh, Telcom Kenya. Teachers need to have a strong movement of retired principals and retired head teachers. People who have re retired in agriculture need to come with their own association so that they can be meeting, discussing their challenges and presenting them as a lobby, as a caucus to government. In fact, that will strengthen policy. If they ca we can have people who, ca who are in groupings who can approach government as pensioners so that we strengthen that line. But more important, we even see doctors when they retire also. They don't have a pension, a strong pension. They were medic, medics in hospital, they also retire and die uh, very poorly uh, in the villages. So I think that uh, we need those associations and they need to have a policy framework which will link them to RBA, the, uh, the Retirement Benefits Authority, and also to Bima House, the Director of Pensions. You find, uh, Madam Lucy, there is a big problem. People retire in this country, and when they retire, it takes them more than two years, three years to access their pension. So some people die without even, uh, without even accessing their pension. And I think we need to streamline that so that money from pension can reach the pensioners on time. Remember, it's the only income they have. But we find some officers in the pension department not uh, helping the pensioners so that they can live long. Instead, we are actually frustrating them, yet they worked as government officers and they did a tremendous job.
to assist this country. So I believe that uh, we are on the right track. This is a topic that we need to bring in uh, other players so that we can now uh, help our, our, our employees. And also we need to have a better, uh, a better plan on how to assist pensioners as government. We need to have even a pensions officer in every county to deal with this big population, especially when we have improved uh, improved uh, life li uh, longevity. Watu wanaishi kwa muda mrefu. Tunaitaji sasa tujue kuna wazee huko nyumbani. How do we give them even their money? How do we make sure the money reaches them? You and can now, uh, Mr. Sunguti, with your expertise, yes. you're talking about the pensions. Like in the counties now, as we wind up, yeah. you find that it's not even, there's no pensions. They are working on gratuity. They are given contracts, yeah. three, two years, then you're out of there. Now, and most of these people who go for those jobs, actually, they are young people. You are employed there. After two years, after three years, your life again is in shambles. You may never even get that gratuity. What you do say about that? First, we, we need to harmonize the various uh, pension uh, funds in the, in the counties. We have the lab, set, uh, sorry, the lab fund. We have the CPF, we have, so we have about three or four, and some are private funds, which are being uh, 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 created in the counties. But I think we need a strong f uh, policy framework to assist uh, our pensioners so that they can live a longer life. But as I finish, I wanted to talk about things you should take care of when you have retired. One of the things that you need to, to, to check is your diet your diet you need to eat healthy you need to exercise you need to keep you need to go to hospital and check your medic medicals so that you have tests and you can know any condition that is affecting you because as you grow older usually your body becomes weaker thank, thank you, you so much yeah. uh, mr sunguti thank you viewers yes. take care of yourself check your health yeah. eat well do exercise plan you are retired. And be close to your family. Be close to your family. Yeah, Thank you so much. That was great. That was uh, Mr. Sunguti. And uh, maybe we'll give you part two of this. Yeah. And uh, for those counties, I hear you are training all these people. Yeah. Counties and yeah. everyone needs your training yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anywhere they can find you in case someone, any number or website? Yeah, uh, me I have no problem. First, uh, I have my office at Ambassador Court, uh, Block C, uh, second floor. Uh, that is uh, near the Integrity Center. That's where we run uh, our Institute of Leadership and Research in Africa. I also run uh, a computer and the business college in Embakasi on a PCA building in Pipeline. But uh, can someone man, come for consultation yeah, individually? And I can also talk to many people. I talk to churches yeah. about retirement and personal financial management. I provide advice. Uh, you can get me on 0722 484041. 0722 484041. Thank you so much, Mr. Sunguti. Thank you very much. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you, viewers. Thank you. If you have not subscribed yet, don't forget subscribe. You don't have to miss this. Get on board. Happy New Year.